Good morning, Mayor Watson. Morning. My name is Brendan Miller. I am counsel for Afternoon. Freedom Corp, which is a organization that represents the protesters that were in your city uh, in January and February 2022. I'm just going to get set up here. So, Mayor Watson, uh, following up on some of my friends' questions uh, that have been put to you today and how things have come out, can you agree with me that you did not handle the situation that was before you? in January and February of 2022 properly? No, I, I think uh, I would characterize it as um, given all of the information and the circumstances, uh, we did the best we could, which obviously was not good enough. Okay. And can you agree with me that you politicalized the protests and politicalized the situation? No, I disagree with that. All right. Can you agree that the politicalization of the matter for which you claim was not yourself, but that the matter was politicalized by the federal government? No. Do you agree that making any of the protests a political issue in the governance level created problems? No. All right. Can you agree with me that the following governments and agencies handled this matter properly? First, the government of Ontario. Uh, ultimately, yes, they did handle it properly, but it took some time to get to that stage. Okay. And the Ontario Provincial Police? The same. And the Ottawa Police Service? Yeah, they were um, on the ground from day one, uh, but obviously, as I've expressed, uh, I would have liked to have seen um, the intervention to bring back our streets to our people done much sooner. Right. And so you've said that they were on the ground from day one, right? That's right, they were the uh, jurisdictional police service. Right, and as the mayor of a town, you don't have the, or the city, you don't have the security clearance or the clearance to know what the actual operational activities are of a police agency, correct? Well, it's not a security clearance matter. Uh, it's a matter that there's uh, a separate autonomous organization called the Ottawa Police Services Board that has full jurisdiction over policy and um, uh, governance of the police board and the hiring and firing of uh, four key officers. Uh, and uh, that is their responsibility. The only direct link that the city has, as you may know from the Police Services Act, is that we approve or reject the budget of the police board. Right, right. so I'm gonna take you back. So I'll just be more narrow. So. During the protests, you did not know what the operational activities were of the Ontario Provincial Police, correct? I wouldn't know what their operational activities were, but they were coming under the jurisdiction and responsibility of the Ottawa Police Service. But again, uh, I was never made aware of the operational plan, nor was I given the specific time that it was going to be launched because it would be outside my jurisdiction. You could put two and two together and you started to see more police arrive. You knew it was happening imminently, but I didn't have the specific date, nor should I. Right. And so you see, you, you saw certain uniformed officers arrive, right? From the Ontario Provincial Police. Well, I, I, I don't know if all of them were in their uniform. There were lots that were plain clothes, I suppose. But uh, I saw a lot of OPP officers in Ottawa when we finally got to that 1800 number, that's for sure. You didn't know how many officers really the Ontario Provincial Police had here from January 26th until the invocation of the Emergencies Act, did you? Well, our chief said that on average we had about 50 to 55 police officers from OPP at different uh, stages uh, on a daily basis. All right. But nowhere near the 1,500 that the Solicitor General referred to on one day. And so just in summary, you had with respect to their operational plans and what they were doing and everything that the police were up to, you did not know what they were doing, either the Ontario Provincial Police or the Ottawa Police Service, right? They didn't tell you because they couldn't. Well, there's the church and state, you know, there's a separation. Uh, the Police Services Board is autonomous under provincial legislation and even the board itself, and I sat on the board for a number of years, but even the board itself uh, does not have the ability to direct the chief on an operational matter, you know. So if they wanted to get together and say, you know, pass a motion, we want you to go and, uh, you know, uh, take care of speeders on Carling Avenue for the next two months, 
uh, that would be ruled out of order. It's not appropriate. Right. So I just want to make it very clear, and I'd just like you to answer this question, if you don't mind. The Ontario Provincial Police and the Ottawa Police Service did not and could not update you on their actual operational plans, correct? Not on the operational plans, but obviously um, we received information in terms of uh, their discussions with other police services in terms of securing those resources in the nation's capital. Now, uh, you used to be the communication director for the Speaker of the House and Federal Parliament, is that correct? That's correct. And you then became a member of Provincial Parliament? No, I became a member of City Council. And then a member of Provincial Parliament after that? No, then Mayor. Then Mayor and then a member of Provincial Parliament after that? No, then President of the Canadian Tourism Commission. Well, <laughs> congratulations, but then at some Mayor. juncture, uh, you became a member of Provincial Parliament, correct? You got it now. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, when you became that member of Provincial Parliament, it was with the Liberal Party of Ontario at the time, is that correct? Correct. And you then became the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing from October 30th, 2007? Uh, yes. And you held that office until January 12, 2010? Correct. And the Minister of Municipal Affairs, uh, that's the ministry that oversees the City of Ottawa and all of our municipalities under the Municipalities Act, right? Well, the Minister is responsible for the acts. Uh, you know, I'm not the overseer of municipalities, but they are my, um, I suppose, a client, if you, you could put it that way, that any municipal issue uh, I was responsible for in Cabinet. Right, but you're very familiar, of course, then, because you held that office uh, with the Municipal Act, correct? I am, yes. Right, and you'd also be familiar with that as the mayor of a city. Yes. All right. And the current Minister of Municipal Affairs, and uh, at the time of the protest, was Mr. Steve Clark, correct? Correct. And the City of Ottawa, like all municipalities uh, across the country, it's a creature of statute that exists at the behest of the provincial legislature, is that correct? Uh, yes, constitutionally. And Yes, and you agree that uh, if Provincial Parliament of Ontario wanted to, they could set out how they want Ottawa to be governed and can basically do what they wish in that regard, right? Pretty much. Yeah. And you can agree with me that the City of Ottawa is treated the same by the Government of Ontario as any other municipality in Ontario, aren't they? It depends on the issue. There are some times where we feel that we're underserved in terms of uh, provincial grants and uh, contributions, and other times we're, we feel we're treat it uh, fairly. Okay. I've not seen in any of the many records in this proceedings that have been produced that at any time whatsoever that you contacted uh, Minister Clark. Uh, I don't know if I had a call uh, with uh, Steve or not. I certainly had discussions with um, his colleague, uh, Minister McLeod, on a number of occasions, and she was very helpful in relaying information. But um, really, the matter we were dealing with uh, fell completely outside the jurisdiction of the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. It was very much the Solicitor General who was the lead minister, and that was um, amplified by the fact that the Premier brought her on the calls. Okay, so the, the issue that you were facing was a resource issue, was it not? Resource of people, yes, police right. officers. Right. And as the former Minister of Municipal Affairs, you know then that under Section 302 of the Municipal Act, that the minister may, upon such terms and conditions as it considers available or advisable, make grants and loans and provide other financial assistance to a municipality, right? You're aware of that? Yes. And at no time did you ever ask for any form of financial assistance from Minister Clark, did you? No, I did with the Premier. You did with the Premier? Yeah. Right, but you and I both know uh, from your former uh, workings as the actual minister that you go through the minister's office, right? You no. ask them for financial assistance and they can give you a grant and give you money to deal with things like protests on an emergency basis even if they want, right? No, there has to be a program in place. You just don't go up to the Minister of Municipal Affairs and ask for a grant. We indicated to the Premier very clearly, as I did with the Prime Minister and his ministers, that we are counting on those two orders of government when this is all said and done and finished that we would be uh, keeping very close uh, tabs of all of the extraordinary costs that we incurred in order to bring peace to our city. And both the Prime Minister and the Premier said that we'll be there for you to help financially. 
And we have since uh, submitted uh, all of our costs. It's in the tens of millions of dollars because, as you know, particularly when the municipal police services arrive, they have to be put up in hotels. They have to be given three meals a day. They, you know, there's, there's expenses. And we reimburse all of those municipalities. I, for instance, ran into the mayor of Belleville a few uh, weeks ago here in Ottawa, a few months ago, rather, at the AMO conference, and he thanked us for the quick repayment of the invoice that they received. So um, the, the Premier uh, was very um, specific and very generous, as was the Prime Minister, that uh, they would be here to help us financially because the protesters were coming not to protest the corporation of the City of Ottawa, they were protesting mandates that were imposed by the provincial and federal government. We happen to be the, um, as I said, the meat and the sandwich. We're caught in this middle fight between protesters and two other orders of government that are responsible for various mandates with respect to COVID-19. So, um, you know, I wouldn't have gone to the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing um, because uh, most of his funding on an emergency basis is through the uh, um, DRAP program, the Disaster Relief Program. This was not a disaster. So it wasn't a disaster? No, it was a crisis. Okay. And the disaster is a natural disaster. Uh, the bad storm we had a little while ago, the, the flooding in 2017, 2019, the tornado in 2018. That's where we seek uh, support of the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. And also uh, through, again, the Solicitor General when we called the Army in to help with the sandbagging and the flooding in, in Ottawa. Right. So uh, the thing is, is this, is can you agree with me as the minister, the former Minister of Municipal Affairs, that having a program set out is not a requirement for the minister to give a city a grant? They can actually just do it under the Municipal Act, can they not? Well, there has to be a program in place. There's not a slush fund that's kept by the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing that is there in case uh, a bunch of truckers come and uh, take over a city. There's no such program. You can't, well, you know, I understand that, but what I'm saying to you is this, is that the minister, and when you were minister, you had the power to grant these grants even if there was no program. Is that not no, true? No, that's not true. Okay. And, and secondly, I'm not sure why we would be going to the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing for a grant. All we were asking for was the compensation to make us whole to ensure that we received after the whole situation had uh, been, been resolved uh, to make sure that we had uh, the necessary receipts. And our treasurer is very good at this, along with the CFO of the Ottawa Police. All of the costs were, were incurred. I think the figure was, and I stand to be corrected, well over $36 million in costs. So that is being uh, okay, worked so on now. The City of Ottawa then had adequate financial funds to deal with the protest? Uh, yes, we did. We All have right. healthy reserve funds. So the only issue is was actually getting bodies, right? Well, getting bodies, uh, yes, but also uh, uh, having the Emergencies Act so that we could get tow trucks and we could have um, a plan in place that once the, um, the police moved in, we could actually move those trucks that refused to move and tow them to a... Um, a so central location. I just, I just got something you said. You said you wanted the Emergencies Act. Yeah. You needed it to get the tow trucks. Well, we needed something to get the tow trucks because we were not successful. So when the Emergencies Act was uh, introduced yeah. and it was made clear specifically one line that towing was one of the requirements that people could not say no to, that was a big win for us in the City of right. Ottawa. And I take it, uh, Mr. Mayor, that you have, of course, a relationship with probably numerous members of Parliament uh, from your position as mayor in Ottawa, right? Correct, yes. Right. Did anybody tell you before the Emergencies Act was invoked that it was coming? No. All right. So you didn't know uh, if you were going to get these powers or what have you were going to be ordered with respect to towing vehicles? No. When the, when the Act was um, introduced and uh, my staff uh, basically printed off a copy of the Act and highlighted those sections that we could use, the one that caught my attention the first was the uh, towing capacity to clean up the situation in center town and buy right. the market. So you do know, and you've already mentioned, that, of course, the uh, Ottawa Police Service Board is independent of the police service, the Ottawa Police Service, and they have no ability to order operational sort of orders or bylaws, right? 
Yes, they, they don't pass bylaws. Right. But. And uh, as the former Minister of Municipal Affairs, you also know that, of course, uh, the province of Ontario and the Premier and the ministers at the provincial level, they have no ability to order the OPP to do anything with respect to resources either. That's correct. Right. So you know these two things, right? And you right. knew them at the time. Yes. Right. And it would have been the commissioner of the OPP that would be making those decisions, right? Yes, he was in contact with Chief Slowly. Right. And at no time, and that's Mr. Uh, Thomas uh, Carreric, is that correct? That's correct. Right. And you agree with me that at no time uh, while you were looking for these resources, did you contact the commissioner of the OPP to outline what you wanted, right? No, that would be inappropriate. That would be inappropriate? To contact a, an OPP officer. He's the commissioner of the OPP. What's the difference? You're, you're okay with having contact with the prime minister of the country, but you're not okay having contact with the commissioner of the OPP to ask him for what you need. Because we have a system in place where we do not have politicians interacting directly with uh, police officers or superintendents or commissioners. That would be highly inappropriate. That's why, as a politician, my counterpart is not the OPP commissioner. It's the premier and the minister responsible for the solicitor general. So it would be highly inappropriate. I, during this whole period, I did not once speak to the commissioner of the OPP or the commissioner of the RCMP completely inappropriate. So, um, you know, I, I dealt at the political level uh, with members of parliament, members of provincial parliament, ministers, and the premier and the prime minister. That was my role in uh, this, this uh, period in our city's history. Okay. And did you have phone calls uh, with the minister uh, of justice and, and the, uh, the premier with respect to what you needed? Well, we had discussions with the solicitor general and the premier. And at the federal level, it was the Minister of Emergency Preparedness and Public Safety and the Prime Minister. Right. And so, again, just in your statement that you provided, I didn't see when the dates were that you had these conversations with the Premier. Uh, when were they? What were the dates? Well, I'll have to look them up. Uh, I don't recall what they are, but I believe it was in... Um, it was two or three during the month of, uh, I believe, February. February. So I stand to be corrected, but I, I, I don't know the specific dates. I, but was, the Prime Minister's office did provide um, a quasi transcript, so we have the specifics on that. But these calls that I had with the Premier were, um, one of them was uh, basically he called me on my cell phone. Uh, we had a long discussion about the situation that was on the ground. And then the other was when the Minister of the Solicitor General joined us and we had a discussion about the need for OPP officers. Okay, so, and I can tell you that the, the Prime Minister and the Premier were talking around that time too. And he, the Premier had told the Prime Minister, and I'm going to put it to you that he also told you, that he had no ability to order the OPP to provide you officers. It had to come from the Commissioner and the OPP themselves, right? Right. Right, and he told you that. Uh, I don't know if he told me that, but the Solicitor General sent a letter, as we saw earlier today, um, uh, indicating that uh, she had uh, sent our request, uh, the letter that Councillor Deans and I sent to the Premier and the Solicitor General. She had sent that to uh, the Commissioner of the OPP, which is the proper route, not telling him what to do, uh, indicating that this request has come in and to please um, take the appropriate action. Right, and the Premier told you that he wouldn't join the tripartite meetings because it was pointless. He felt it was a waste of time. Right, and it was. How do you know that? Because you were looking for officers, and they couldn't order officers. No, that's... I, I don't think you fully understand the situation, that I can't pick up the phone and start uh, barking orders at a commissioner of any police service, whether it's the OPP or the RCMP. There's a protocol in place, and that protocol is to have politician to politician. And the RCMP and the minister said the same thing. He can't uh, direct uh, Commissioner Lecky, but he can certainly pass along our request. And uh, she uh, made the decision, and we thank her and the commissioner because at the end of the day, they did provide the resources that ended up uh, cleaning up this uh, terrible situation our residents found themselves in. Right, and this protocol that you've been talking about and mentioned, is it in writing? 
Well, it's, it's the law that, that politicians are not allowed to direct uh, police services. It's very... Uh, I, I understand that, but there's nothing that I know of, at least, and if you could point me to it, that says that you were prevented from either calling, commis calling Commissioner Lucky or calling the Commissioner of the OPP and saying, hey, we need some, we need some more resources. Can you do this? Again, again, I think that would be entirely inappropriate, you know, to give the powers of um, um, operational responsibilities to politicians is a I'm very not saying that, sir. Slope. I'm asking you if there's an actual policy that says you are not allowed to call and make a request to the police. Is there a policy in that regard? Well, our city solicitor advised that the route that we should be taking is the letter to the Premier and the Prime Minister and the two appropriate Okay, ministers. so it wasn't a protocol. It was what the city solicitor told you to do. Well, I'm, I'm assuming that he would have told me what to do based on the uh, the law of the land and okay. uh, the policy well, is very, I'll very ask him clear. about that when he testifies. Sure. The other questions I have for you um, have to do uh, with the mediator. Now you had asked the Sorry, with what? The mediator. Right. You had asked the federal government if they could appoint an independent mediator, is that right? Uh, yes. And the federal government said no. That's correct. Right. And they said no because they didn't want to look like uh, they were in engaging with the, pro with the protesters. Is that right? You'd have to ask them. I'm, I can't speculate why, although, as you know, there was a, uh, a movement on the same day uh, by two colleagues on council to bring a resolution to council to ask the federal government to um, allow a mediator to try to find a middle ground. Uh, that motion never made its way onto the council agenda, so uh, right. the council and, and didn't take you, a position. You said that you had no issues with financial resources at the time, so why didn't you just hire a mediator? Well, again, uh, the issue that the protesters were in Ottawa was not to protest the city of Ottawa, but federal and provincial mass mandates, among other issues that uh, the truckers were upset with. So it was not really up to the city to start um, that kind of a broad-based mediation. What we did do and what we were uh, somewhat successful was to secure an agreement by uh, Ms. Leach and those uh, truckers who fell under her jurisdiction, for lack of a better term. And uh, I believe that was successful. We were able to get 40 big rigs and about 60 smaller ones. Uh, out of the uh, residential area and onto Wellington Street. Right. So that was not mediation, that was an individual, Mr. French, who came forward and offered at no charge uh, the ability to uh, see if there was some common ground between our police service and the, um, the protesters. But in terms of uh, uh, why the federal government didn't want to deal with a mediator, you'd have to ask so, them. So Mr. French steps forward, he says, I can help and he finds some common ground and was going back and forth, of course, between the city and the protesters. Yes. So he mediated the issue. Well, um, he was a facilitator because uh, he ended up getting a, uh, a letter from uh, me and then uh, a subsequent response from uh, Ms. Leach. And uh, the act activities took place, I think, the next day, and then they were halted once the, Envi once the Emergencies Act was implemented, I believe, on the 14th. Right. And... Uh, after that uh, agreement was done, the protesters followed the agreement and tried to get on to Wellington, and the only thing that ended up stopping them was the police. Is that correct? No, the police were there actually to help facilitate uh, and traffic manage the, um, the congestion to bring them on to Wellington Street and away from the residential areas. So a senior officer was assigned, and uh, my understanding was that... Um, it worked quite well, and then the Emergencies Act basically put a halt to that because all resources for police were needed uh, to clear the area uh, the following days. I put it to you that after the Emergencies Act and it was invoked, and you may have heard some of this evidence yesterday, that there was just a change and that it was the city who decided not to follow through with the agreement with the protesters, and that was what happened with respect to that agreement. No, I, I believe that we uh, did our best to live up to the agreement, and um, uh, as did uh, the truckers who did move, and we appreciate that. Because right. that was the first time, as you know, where there had been any kind of movement uh, on the ground. There was a level of frustration, uh, 
there was more and more rowdyism that was taking place in the, uh, in the streets of Ottawa. And we felt, as my number one preoccupation was to protect those residents who had been putting up with horn honking 24 hours a day, diesel fumes that were coming into their apartments and condominiums, and general unruliness where people were afraid to leave their homes. Right. And so you would agree then these statements that have been out by various people that uh, the protesters did not live up to the agreement are incorrect. In fact, they did. So I'm not sure who you're referring to. There's been people. numerous. It's okay. But you agree that the, the protesters lived up to their end of the bargain, right? On that particular issue, yes. Right. And you had early said in your evidence that, you know, you couldn't negotiate with these people rationally, but you did have that done in the end, didn't you? No, I didn't get involved in it because I, I did not believe that I should be personally involved, but Mr. French acted as a go-between between, between the city OPS and the the group um, under Miss Leach, and um, you know we're we're appreciative of Mr. French. He had uh, really no skin in the game. He was not being paid for this. Uh, there was no business uh, angle. Uh, I think he saw what was happening, and, and right. it was his capital and, as well. And, and uh, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, action. but I just want to get my question answered. So. Uh, <clears throat> they said, you, you said earlier you couldn't negotiate with them rationally and you had no dealings with any negotiations with them except for the issue with Mr. French, right? I had one call, one or two calls with Mr. French and then it was uh, handed over to Mr. Kanalakis and Mr. Arpa. Right. And so prior to that time, you had no attempt or nothing of involvement with respect to attempting to negotiate with the protesters, correct? That's correct. All right. So your statement earlier that you could not negotiate with these people rationally, you agree that the one time that you actually had any involvement whatsoever, you did, right? You had a rational negotiation that resulted in an agreement, correct? No, I didn't because I wasn't involved until the final agreement. Came I understand. Forward. Okay. Thank you. Those are my questions. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.